Okay, we're getting ready to finish up this tranny here. So, we had this done when we stopped uh, last night. So now we got uh, a few things left to do on it. We got to do the kicker cover yet. Um, got to put the sprocket on it, which is over here. That's what we put on. We got the kicker gears to put on, speedometer drive, and get the top cover back on here, obviously. And we gotta get a throw bearing on here, which was right over here. So, a few things there. This is our junk pile. Looks like I grabbed everything except the push rod. All right, so that's where we're at on this. So I went ahead and cleaned up this here the rest of the way, and then sealed it up here. The three bond down inside of there. It'll soak in a little bit, just like I did on these surfaces over here. Same deal. Let them soak in and seal things up. So I'll put this up here on a tripod that everybody likes that I hate. But it's better than Rick, I guess. According to all the comments, anyway. Alright, so this is the one that I screwed up and got the sealer in there too deep. So I've got that fixed now, so now it works correctly like it's supposed to. Nice and free. And then the uh, centering on the shifting mechanism is correct too now. So let me shift it. And the mechanic goes to about there. Then it springs over the rest of the way. And it does that equally in both directions. It's mechanical and then slips in. So back on neutral. So now we can slip it on the training. We'll get ready to put it on. So that's all fixed. Get all these sub assemblies fixed is what we've been working on here. <coughs> okay, let's see. I guess the next thing to do is put in our speedometer drive. The gear looks pretty haggard in there. It's had some issues in the past. He's also got an issue with the top thread here being damaged. And those threads there being damaged. So usually you have a speedometer cable, you go ahead and run this up and down to make sure it goes on there before you put it all together. But I don't have that, so I'll have to make do I guess. So I have a thread file. He even says on thread file. So anyway, this just gives you your 60 degree cut. It's pretty well worn out doll. Basically you just go around the thread like that. You can knock off. You can hear it right there, the bad spot. So we just kind of file a little bit. So that cleans the thread up a little bit. Feels about the right height. When your fingernail crosses, if it doesn't push your nail up, it's probably close. Give it a little bit more just to make sure. Too deep is better than not enough. Gives you more room for the nut to go on. Now over here, you got a couple mesh threads over here, so we'll catch those real quick also. If I had a nut there, I'd screw on and make sure it fits, but I don't have it, so. Make do. Get all the junk off the table. 
Okay, now you gotta make sure this actually fits in a transmission case here. A lot of times you put these in there, they bind up. And that's not a good thing. Okay, in this case here, it spins pretty freely. You gotta make sure you spent the same direction of movement. I've had them where they didn't work one way, not the other. Of course, the way they didn't work is the way it spins. Okay, so that appears to be good. That's always a good sign. Okay, let's see if we got a new gasket with our gasket set. Should they give us a blank off gasket? So we got one to blank it off. It doesn't appear they gave us one to actually use. Oh, there's one right there. All right, we got a new one. All right. Let me if we can take the used one off. Get the gasket goop out. Both sides of gaskets. Fairly thick layer. Push it on there. Okay, we have to screw over here someplace. For that. There we go. The left of the Phillips head. That was my left hand. Now you bring the other hand around, see how that works. And it's pretty tight. Okay, so now it's in there. Spin it, make sure it rotates. Appears to be working. A little bit of grease on the gear here. It just doesn't run dry. I don't like putting oil in the tranny while it's apart because it just makes a huge big mess. Probably should put some on those forks before I put them together. Forgot to. Oh well. Can't get to that one very well. So when I put a new tranny in the bike, I always put oil in it. And you jack out the back of the bike and you run it through the gears with the motor running. And you just let it free spin and lubricate everything really good. You don't run it neutral for a little while before you do that because it's basically dry in here. If you can't run the bike, you jack it up and turn it with a rear wheel. And at least half the gears will rotate. And, you know, you want to get some oil in there as soon as you can to get things lubed up. Okay, so we got that pretty well done there on that part. Now we can either put the sprocket on right now or we can move on to some other stuff. So might as well go ahead and put the sprocket on, what the hell. So this here we have the spacer in here. In here to keep the gear from falling out. So now that the whole tranny is together, we don't have to worry about that. It's not going to fall out. Okay, now you can put the sprocket on the correct way or you can put it on upside down. If you need more uh, chain clamps, you can put it on upside down like this. But the correct way is like that. Recesses to the inside. That's how it's supposed to be. Then you have a nut and a lock tab. Obviously we already had the nut. And the lock tab. Put that over here. Lock tab. Put it on there like that and you pull it over after you torque it. Okay, what I like to do is I like to put a little sealer on this before I put it together.
Actually, with this it doesn't really matter. That's only if you got a super head on it. Keep forgetting. Sealer here doesn't make any difference right now. Uh, let's see, I need some Loctite. I use red thread locker on it. Loctite's already set up in it. That's what these are for. Some people think those are for holding your papers together. Not around here. All right, you just put them on a couple of different ones here. I have to do them all. <clears throat> I do put them on the nut here. So there's your Loctite on there. Now the way these things don't leak is you have to tighten everything up tight. And what seals these things is right over here, this edge right here, it's on the high gear. Right here on the little lip right here. And that's it. Goes like that. It pushes on that edge right there. And that's what seals them. So it has to be tight in order to seal. If you don't seal it, it leaks down the splines. So that's the key part. That's why when you put new ones in, you got to make sure they're smooth on this side and not all torn up. You gotta make sure this is good on this edge too and not torn up. If you see any kind of mark in these where they're bad, they're junk, they'll leak. If you put a super nut on there, it might seal. But all of that stuff is debatable. But one thing that does matter is it has to be tight. And that's not tight, it is going to leak 100% of the time. This is reverse thread, so that means you to loosen it to tighten it. Like that. Wipe off the Loctite where it's got the wrong spot. And what I do is I dog it in two gears at once. So I'm going to high gear, low gear. And we're going to turn it this way here. So that's how we leave it. Special socket I made. Use the six points, you get better torquing power. You take a couple sockets, you put an extension in the middle, half drive, and you're good to go. Or you can buy one. As long as you're locked in gear, you don't hurt yourself. I torque it whatever this gives me, that's how much I torque it. You get about five or six good boop, 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 boops, and that's enough. Now, after you torque it down, this should still move. You will see I got pretty hard to move. Now, is that all sealed, or is it actually dragging on something? That's the question. It's definitely a lot of drag. It does rotate, though. Seems to be pretty consistent. Don't feel any uh, rubbing marks. You can easily feel metal rubbing against itself, balling up type feel. I'm not getting any of that. So we're going to assume it's just tight seals and everything. Now I'm going through the gear set right now. If you put it in neutral, it's a little easier. It's still tight. I was in low gear, so I'm going through the whole gear set. So. Whenever you go through the whole gear set, it's, it makes it harder. This third gear works a little easier. That's high gear. That's your easiest gear. Size neutral. All right, so it's a little bit draggy, but I think it'll be okay. Just need to get some oil in there and get it broken in. I guess that's why you jack the bikes up and let them run for a little bit. And work everything in. Okay, after you're all done doing that, you gotta go ahead and tighten the nut, the lock down. 
Make sure you put on a side nut that's trying to screw on. Okay, lock tab is on. Main shaft. There's high gear. Okay, so we got that part done. Now I'm going to slip over to your kicker side over here. We've got to rebuild this whole kicker assembly. Okay, this is the clutch arm that goes in there. And they got this loose up here for some reason. Not sure why they had it loose. I'm going to take the nut off. So I got a big stack of washers on there, car because the nut was bottoming out in there. I think we can take out at least one of those washers. So you put on try it, and obviously not. It's got a lack of clearance. Oh, I got tired all of a sudden. So that must be why there's three washers on there. That's what it takes. Alright, we'll put a little bit of Loctite on there just to make sure it stays put. Actually, I can't do that right now. Can't do that until I put the kicker cover on it. So we'll leave that loose for now. now this here is loose right now, so you gotta make sure that's tight. So put the Loctite back out. Another one's plugged up. Yeah, wipe off the excess locked head on the threads over there. Okay, we'll tighten this down. Seven sixteenths. Now, if you tighten on the top, on this part, you can twist the whole stud off. So you try to go all the way to the bottom. You have to go on the inner hex. That's why they give you two different ones. Okay, that's pretty tight. Remember, you only go into the aluminum. It's a thin, cheap-ass stud, so don't tighten it too much. Very easily strip it. Okay, now this shaft goes through here. Like this. to the finger. Yeah. There so here's your clutch finger. It goes right in here like this over here. Now you want to make sure these are rounded shape right here and not flat. This one here is about half worn away. So you can see how it's still got a little bit of a curve to it, but it's getting a little flatness to it. So this one's still usable. This is a genuine Harley one, which I like. They're a lot stronger in the aftermarket. If this is an aftermarket one, I'd probably replace it, but being a genuine one, it's a lot better than stock, the aftermarket, so I'll keep it. So I'll put a little bit of lubricant on here. Okay, that's Make sure you get down here tip also. In the shaft there. Work it in a little bit, make sure it's good and loose. Wipe off the excess. Okay, now you put your part in there. Rotate it where it's going to actually work. Okay. Now this model is held in together with an E clip. You can also use a snap ring. It goes in that groove way down in there. 
right down in there. Now, I like to put a washer in there if I can to support it. Otherwise, the clips come off pretty easy. So these are caliper uh, spacing washers over here. They're the right size usually. So they make these in different thicknesses. They make thick and thins. So this is an in between size. That's probably about 30 thou. It's probably going to be too big to use in there, I bet. We'll see. Looks like it might just fit. There's definitely not a lot of room in there. Okay, I use a pair of duckbill pliers to hold the clip and shove it in there. Now you got a sharp edge and a rounded edge. Sharp edge you want to go out so it helps hold it in a little better. Try not to lose the clip. Sounds like they're coming for you. Checking to make sure the clip's all the way in. It doesn't have a lot of tension on it. Alright, in there. So now I got a washer in there. Okay, you feel your in play here. See how much you got. So you could probably put a little bit more in there if you had to, but that one works, so I'm alright with that. Probably just enough you can't do a thicker one. Okay, so that'll work for that. Okay, next thing is you put the kicker shaft in it. This part. Get over here a little further away and see better. Okay. I already put a new set of kicker bushings in here. And like most of this new stuff, there was no fitting required. I just beat it in there, give it a couple hits with a plastic hammer, you know, like this here type stuff. Knock off the high spots and it was in there. They're not very good these days on replacing the stuff. You got a new O-ring here in the package. Make sure you put that inside here where it belongs. It goes down inside there between the two bushings down in there. We'll stick it in there with a screwdriver. All right, so now it's down in there. You can see in there, I'm not sure. I'm going to take a little bit of grease, stick it up in here and lubricate this side of it. Make sure you got some down there where the o-ring is and shove it in between the o-ring and the bushings to pack it in a little bit. A little loop on there too where we're at it. Okay, then you got this other side over here to do. So keep your hands clean, your tools don't get dirty. Okay, here's the washer that goes up in there. So the, you got to side this countersunk out pretty hard and the other one is sharp. So if the countersunk side goes against here because it's supposed to be a radius in here so they don't break off. But these aftermarket ones, they square cut them so they can kind of break off more. You can see how they had this one in backwards. It's supposed to go in this direction. So I put them in there correctly. Put a little more grease on there. Then you come in there and lubricate the hell out of it from this side. Okay. Then you go ahead and push it on through. You go on this side, you lubricate the bushing by rotating it. You're going to push it by the O-ring so you kind of rotate it with steady pressure on it. And it kind of pops through. 
Don't just push on it because you're going to shear the bushing or shear off the O-ring. We already got interruptions today. Wonderful. Alright, we'll be back in a minute. Alright, interrupted. Someone didn't want to talk to me, just want to listen to static. Okay, now we got our gear. So you got to time this thing, so you got the kicker, spring, and stuff works correctly. So you have to do that. I use a crescent wrench to dial it in. Okay, so you have your pin, you get your spring stop, and you want to have some amount of load on it. So you put a little bit of load on it like that, and you flip it around. I'm not answering it now, see. And you got your kicker stop here. And you gotta figure out where your kicker stop goes to make it work. And the kicker stop hits up against the right here. This area right here is where it hits. Hello? So you gotta make sure that works like that. Hello? We take care of this spot. How about you uh sixty five centimeters? back in a second. Uh -huh. Alright, we're back. I was the only tranny, so I had to talk to him. Okay, I'm getting back to my, oh, slip my wrench off. Getting down here, we'll figure out what kind of a preload we're gonna have on our spring. So right now we're at zero. I usually give them about half a turn, which is about like that. And like I said, the stop goes against the case right here. So if you take a tranny and stick it in there like, like this, you get a reference point to where it sits. It's hard to show when I'm holding it where it goes, but it's over here. It's hard to tell, but anyway, I'm holding my crescent wrench. So this is time correctly. Now if you have a kicker that's harder to kick, return-wise, you got to put another more turn on it. If it's a real easy to return kick, you can go by with only a quarter turn to wrap. I usually give it a half a turn, that's a good starting point. Like I said, you can fine-tune that, depending on what you need. Okay, after you figure out what you want, you got the lock tab, you go ahead and put that on there. And you take your nut. And you put it on. You torque it down and see how tight it gets to be. Ah. Sure, it still works freely. Looks nice and free. It's not bound up or anything. You can push on it for in play. Hear all that in play? It's got quite a bit. Now, if your kicker uh, ratchet does not release, you can go in there and play around and take some of that play out. So these are your kicker gears over here. If this does not release enough, they'll drag. You, know, you hear this noise like this in there? That's these teeth eating themselves up right here. So when it gabs, when it when it hooks together, it works good. But when just you know you have to have it disconnect enough, it doesn't drag. So if you need to have it disconnect further, you can go ahead and shim this thing out a little bit. Now there's no way of knowing what you need. Now these angle ramps right here on the teeth is what disengages it when it comes up and hits it. These are not really heat treated very good anymore, so they wear quite a bit. So one trick you can probably do is go in here and grind these teeth a little bit and de take some of the sharp edges off, which I have not done yet. So I think we'll go back there and play with that a little bit. See if we can make the kicker gears live longer. This is what the used ones look like. See how they get all torn up? That's because this gear is eating in there pretty heavy, like this. So I'm gonna go in and deburr these teeth a little bit and see if we can save this gear a little, or save the new gear. So nobody makes a good one, so you got what you got. So we'll go grind on that a little bit. And like I said, you can play around your disc with your how much you disconnected here by this in play. You can take, you can put a shim under here, or you can put a shim over on this other side, depending on where you want the gear to be. And Sometimes they have a lot of clearance like this, other times they have almost none. 
So this one here's got quite a bit. So we'll see how it releases. Most of the time they release quite a bit, so it doesn't matter. We'll have to see how that works out. And that's, of course, that's stuff you can't tell until you actually have it all together. Okay, for so now let's go back and do some grinding these teeth, and then we'll see what happens with that. So I'll work on that here in a few minutes. We'll skip over to here to the tranny while I still got some work going. I'm going to go ahead and put this gear... Oh, I can't do that. i got to go grind that. Okay. I was going to go ahead and put that on the tranny, but can't do that until you fix it. Okay, so let's go back and grind it. We'll show you that. Okay, we're back here on the welding bench. We're going to grind his teeth off a little bit. So we just take a flap disc here. This one here is a medium grit one. Basically, we're just going to go in here and stick it down each tooth a little bit and try not to wad it up in my fingers. We'll see how that works. about 45 degrees and it's rolling around. <coughs> so you can see what the radius tooth looks like there. This one I haven't done yet. So this one I rolled it. This one here's just a straight angle. So just kind of play around a little bit. Enough of these to really tell what works or not, so I'm play with it. See, I'm getting a good radius on that. This one here is partially done. This one's a little more radius. So you can change your angles around to get whatever you think works the best. Anything's better than a sharp edge, so I'm not sure which way to dig in. Pretty good on that side. Now we flip it around, you see how sharp this edge is over here now. See how it's all rounded? See how it's all sharp? So I could do the same thing the other direction. It doesn't work very good right handed, so I try left handed.
mosquitoes chasing me over here. side here doesn't hurt at all. This side over here you can feel it digging into your hand so you can tell it before and after by just flipping the gear over. Alright so that should make that uh, work a lot better. Hopefully not chew up the, ring, the big gear too much. So I can go ahead and clean all the grit off of here. You don't want any of this grinding grit inside your tranny. So we'll get this all cleaned up. We'll be back. Alright we're back again. So I got this gear all cleaned up now. I had to go grind on this damn nut because it's made wrong. It wouldn't fit on my socket, one inch socket. Now it does. So to grind the hell out of here, every flat on it. It's like a 30 thou oversized nut, which odd size. Stupid ass import stuff's always made wrong these days. So anyway, now we can go ahead and put the, put the kicker gears in. up our shaft here, locate up our bushing, okay, so that goes all on the shaft right there, so you get the spring right here, that goes against there, if you put more tension on these things, all they do is make it harder for the, the gear to disengage, which makes it chew up the other side. Now this thing here has a lot of more tension, it seems, than what a stock one does, as I recall. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little customization to it. Reverse bend it. See if I can't get rid of some of that tension on there. If you take off too much, it'll, it'll pop out of gear on you. Not sure if I helped it in there or not. Hard to tell. Doesn't really fit in there very well either. Spring is supposed to fit around the gear and it doesn't. There it goes. Sprung in there. So it's got quite a bit of tension on this thing, so. I'm thinking it's probably still too much. And it doesn't want to release any tension on it, so I guess that's what we're going to get. Okay, let's see what kind of tension we got. So this goes on to here. It just pushes on that right there. And you got this here, there's a keyway. Right there is a keyway. And that's where this goes. You need to slide the key over the onto the shaft first, but this one came off. Let's see if I'll go on this way. Doesn't appear to want to go that way. For 
fingers. Now it's jammed on. See what happens? You try to force stuff. All you do is screw it all up. Out. Now I'm going to knock the key out of there. Punch and a hammer works usually. Okay, key is out. Now this is supposed to have a ball bearing up on here to keep the bearing from turning. It goes right here inside the throwout bearing right here. So when you don't have that on there, it's free to spin on the push rod and tear up the push rod a little bit. So this is not exactly how it's supposed to be. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this, that way I know it's good. I don't want the new bearing to get thrown out. Now, the way you test these bearings is you push on them in the center here. And you put pressure and you hear them. Not the ringing, but the bad bearing part. You know how rough it is in there? That's what you don't want to hear. So this is a brand new one here. Most likely it's probably almost as bad. We'll go find out. I got to grab a push rod and I got to go see about another ratchet gear. So we'll be back.